the meeting. So I think we we may start, um, and I will probably unless Jim wants to take a, take the lead while I'm fixing um, um, this audio settings. So this is an interim meeting um, for the ACE working group. I uh, I guess you are pretty um, aware of the not well. If not, please read those. And the agenda is the one we provided um, in the email. So I guess that uh, we may start with the draft ITF ACE MQTT TLS profile. And um, um, I, I would like uh, maybe uh, Sinjen to start presenting it. Hello, I Not just sent out some slides. But yeah, okay, I was going to ask that whether you had mm. seen the slides I've shared this week. Well, it's an, um, it's not a problem. If not, it's not important. I can just talk so, over. So, by the way, do we have anyone taking uh, notes or? Um, Uh, JavaScript, well, it's very inconvenient for me because I, I'm not hearing anyone. So um, I'm wondering, Jim, do you want to take that over? Um, sure. Or am I, I trying to reconnect myself? Or Yeah. Can't figure out what is going on. Um, I'm trying to remember exactly where Ether, the Ethernet addresses are at the moment. It's where, where the Ethernet. Etherpad tool is. Uh, ever since. Oh, well, um, I'll just go ahead and take notes offline. Um, but this is put on the mail. Though. Okay, maybe that this. Um, I don't seem to have your um, slides. So why don't you just go ahead and start with your presentation? Sure, no problem. Um, it was a few slides anyway. I was giving updates on what changed since Singapore. Um, so just looking at my own slides in my own computer so that I remember my, the key points I want to raise. Um, so we, since Singapore, we um, submitted the third uh, version three, um, which uh, aimed to address some of the discussion that was uh, raised during the Singapore meeting, and also Jim's comments on the draft. Um, the major, I think, change was uh, a clarification on how the TLS exporter was um, uh, described, and uh, we now have agreed on the name um exporter a sign challenge um which would be used to uh create a random loan so that the client can do proof of possession to the uh broker um and this was kind of uh the necessary step for mqtc version 3.1 uh, to be able to do um the proof of possession uh, we've also clarified the text clarified the use of offset info topic um um, try to explain a little bit about more on um, giving permissions using wildcards uh, for the scopes. Um, and uh, that was basically the majority of the changes. Um, in the past week, uh, we've in the past weeks, we continue to receive comments from Jim and Daniel. And in the last case, um, majority of the comments are focusing on how the client authenticates to and authorizes to the um, broker. And uh, on Jim's recommendation, if you remember, we've introduced to the spec um, 
a uh, four ways to do the, to to do this based on uh, choices on TLS and MQTT. And one of uh, uh, Daniel's comments was that in the case where the TLS uh, was in anonymous and MQTT, uh, there was no authentication. We allowed that case for topics that didn't require any permissions to uh, to publish or subscribe to, or the auth set info topic as the first step towards an ACE style authentication. Uh, he was wondering whether that should be included in the options uh, um, and whether the wording should be changed. The other thing that I would like to have uh, feedback on is that uh, the use of multiple tokens the way that we've described this in the draft is that um, if a token is being submitted through the TLS handshake as well as um, for the TLS handshake as well as in the connect message uh, for MQTT, we basically um, only consider the latest token and any permission that has been granted in the previous case of to token validation is overwritten. We always uh, consider the latest token and we kind of stick to that for the cases when a token can be submitted by the client during a persistent connection um, after the connect uh, the client can re-authenticate and by uh, sending a token again and we kind of again overwrite the previous token so this is another thing that i would like to get work group opinion on what how to handle multiple tokens um, the second issue that I would like to raise is that we've kind of settled on certain lengths in terms of um, the way the um, exporter a sign challenge is used in the TLS. Um, that it's 32 bytes. Uh, another way of doing the proof of possession that we described that can be used in version 5 of MQTT was to allow um, a um, challenge response flow. Uh, where the broker can initiate it by sending a nonce and the client adds its own nonce and then they do proof of possession over those two nonces. Um, we kind of settled on eight bytes, but as Jim raised, we do not actually have to do eight bytes. We already consider TLS as the underlying uh, transport uh, security. So we, we can afford to use um, uh, larger uh, nonces. And uh, that is something that I would like to also uh, get work group opinion. Should we stick to the work group's uh, decision on eight bytes or should we extend it? Um, other things that um, open issues, other discussion points is, um, will be based on uh, particularly Jim's and Daniel's comments so far. We're also, also welcoming others to join in um, giving us comments and feedback. Majority of the stuff that's remaining at the moment is uh, on f formatting clarifications on certain data that needs to be passed um, via MQTT messages. And the examples of these include how do we pass AS creation hints? We should settle on a format on that. Um, we should uh, be clear on how the authentication data is omitted uh, when we are permitting AS discovery we should be very clear on the auth data format etc so these are the things that uh, we will be specifying for the version 4. Um, we've uh, omitted the discussion on payload encryption for the published message leaving that to the PubSub document and a discussion on these have started um, in the worker mailing list um, so we won't be uh, if we won't be providing any solutions or saying anything more than what we write in the spec at the moment for that point. Um, yeah, so these are the main issues I wanted to raise. Um, if there are any other questions or points that I should raise, please let me know. Um, we're getting some pushback right now from Ben on using only eight bytes for mm -hmm the OSCOR nonces. So I'm pretty sure we want to at least go to 128-bit nonces. Okay. That's perfectly fine. Um, for the, um, we've also discussed, um, uh, discussed it earlier, and, and I think in, in my case, particularly for the TLS MQTT um, 
uh, we can make that assumption that the client and the uh, should be able to work with uh, l uh, larger sizes. Um, so that I do not see a problem for this particular spec because we already make the assumption of a uh, slightly powerful client that can handle TLS. Um, the other issue, the other thing that I would like to clarify is that if we are fine with the TLS exporter sizes, we, you mentioned, Jim, that could be also defined as variable, the auth data, um, as long as we are clear on the formatting. Um, should we stick with 32 bytes or should we be basically considering something variable? That could be uh, negotiated between um, in the deployment. Sorry, sorry, I muted myself. Um, the the, the variable length stuff I was looking at actually had to do with the challenge response items, I think. Um, but also with the length of tokens. Those were the two things that I was actually looking at. Because um, if you send back a, a variable length res uh, response, Chat, chat, uh, nonce value from the client plus your signature, then you can't parse it. I think we're fine at using a fixed length value from the exporter, um, unless we want to say, you know, use whatever length you need to for it to fill out the buffer. I mean, if you're doing a 512 bit signature, do we want to have more than 128 bits for signing? Would be the question on that. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I do not think so. I, I think. Um... I think the, the the length that we settled um, 30, with the 32 bytes and having a fixed size, I'm fine with going with that decision actually. I just wanted to make sure that there is no other opinion that kind of says, no, we shouldn't be specifying and we, we should let variable. But if, we, if the work group is fine with the, the length, then I'm also fine. I think we'll probably send that one out to the sector and see if we get any nasty responses on it. Mm -hmm. um, another question I had, um, uh, and um, I raised a comment and, and response was that uh, you were uh, basically um, coming back and forth with that is um, the use of T TLS exporter, but I think it's only in one case. So. Is that something um, we want to clarify that now, or? Uh, yeah, that, that could be uh, something that we can discuss now. You're right, Daniel. You were asking uh, in this response challenge one, I kind of let the RS and the client um, generate random uh, nonsense, um, not tying, not binding it to the TLS exporter. And I gave the option of TLS exporter for the MQTT, you know, the, the, um, the other method, which could be supported by MQTT version 3.1. Um, the reason for that is that some of the people that are implementing it came back with, gave a pushback about TLS exporters. And I had to um, admit that I wondered whether there should be an option that uh, that doesn't use a channel TLS exporter, where the RS uh, is allowed to create its own, own random nonsense and the client. Um, I'm wondering what the work group opinion is that is 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 about that. Um, do we always try to use channel binding? Um, I'm not too worried about channel binding per se. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that you want to be able, um, especially on a reauth authentication, to be able to use fresh values and not be tied to the same exporter value throughout the entire mm -hmm. conversation. Okay. Do we do we think that we want to worry about man in the middle, considering that we're validating the public key of who we're talking to? 
So basically, I wasn't, thinking, I, I wasn't thinking there was a problem, but um, I, I can't think of a problem offhand because we're doing we're doing public key validation or symmetric key validations on both sides. Um, the validation is performed, um, you mean uh, using TLS or? Yeah, I mean, we, we've, the, the client has validated it's talking to the correct server over TLS. Yeah. And the server is validating this talking to the correct client. Using the, the, um, mm -hmm. I mean, using using the the pop key. Okay, so but um, as far as I remember, also we are using the exporter in other in a in another section. Do we? Yes, that's because um, to, that is because for MQTT version three one, I cannot uh, it cannot support a uh, challenge response flow. So the uh, the broker and the client needs to settle on a kind of a, a nonce to do the pop. So the best way was to do to rely on the TLS to do that. Before I was proposing things like using the random client ID, something from the payload, but there was pushback on that. That you know um, that might not be random enough, and the client ID uh, may be repeated over different sessions. So that's why we use TLS exporter uh, uh, to create, to get that um, fresh view per connection. Mm -hmm. Well, my opinion, but I, I, um, I mean, I, I don't have, um, it's just my thoughts. So, I mean, uh, it, I don't want it to influence in one way or the other. Is that um, what I am personally thinking is that it's better to not rely on the capability to, um, of the, I think it's the client to generate some nonce, and if we can use that on the TLS exporter, it's um, I would say it's better. In ad in addition, that it provides a channel binding. Um, that said, um, if you receive some pushback, well, it's um, but is that only for MQTT version three or? For this particular um, uh, version five, when people okay. do the um, response, um, the challenge response flow, that's the only part where um, people kind of said, you know, we're going to settle on that and okay. we prefer to that RS just generates its own nonsense. Okay. I mean, I will note that the MQTT version that I yeah. am. Yeah, we can do yeah. a main on that maybe. Like, it's maybe an option for. Uh, to do to, to channel binding on that if necessary. But again, as Jim said, when the, when there is re-authentication, this has to be done anyway. And this is only MQTT version 5 capability, the re-authentication. And in the re-authentication, this has to be done with different nonces. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, basically what has to be balanced, I, I think, is the, um, um, do we provide the way the nonces are generated or not, and um, I think that's the the, the ma main question we should ask and um, provide an answer to. Uh, what do you mean by that? Um, if we use the exporter, you basically right. say this is how we generate. I mean, this is how the the randomness is a uh, guarantee. Otherwise. You just let the the the, the, um, the client to generate the nonce himself, and he can reuse the same uh, fixed value, for example. Or uh, well, both both the client and the server are generating nonces as input to that challenge. So you can't. So you have to have two bad actors, not one bad actor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what is the reason for not using the exporters then? Freshness. Okay, so it's actually a good reason not to use those if we want to have more freshness. Yes. So yeah, um, I think it. So it it is it, it, it 
is everyone agreeing that it's better not to use those uh, exporters? Well, I don't have any problem with using the exporter on the first round. Yeah. But that may make something more complex, does it? To have to distinguish between different rounds. Uh, you cannot you, you for for set for the second and third as uh, off on round of reauthentication, you you cannot use the exporter. You can only use it the exporter the first time round. Mm -hmm. That's the yeah, only yeah. time it's an option. And does it worth to have a separate case for the first round or? Uh, yeah, because it duplicates the one point three, the three point one version. Mm, okay. Okay, so I would I would say if we trust the uh, nonsense non scheme for the second and the third round, we can also use the same thing for the first round. Yeah, no, I don't have any problems with that. Okay, so so not using exporters at all might be the most straightforward solution, is it? Just for this uh, channel challenge response flow, yeah. yes. Yeah. So, okay, yeah. Maybe that would be good because I suspect that's going to come back um, from um, safety reviews and so on. So the reason we don't use the channel bindings. I think then I can add a comment comment on this why we we support that basically. Yeah, I think that's. Um, I'll just that's raise the reauthentication. Okay. Any other question? Concerns. So, hearing none, do you know wh when we will have a version four? Very soon, because I have. Um, um, I'm I'm planning within one or two weeks to have the version four. Okay. I did have noted uh, all the comments I've received, um, and it's in the GitHub, and I do have a plan to resolve them. Uh, one question, though, um, because I introduced this TLS exporter um, uh, label, uh, I was asking because I think it will be used generally in the working uh, group. Um, is my document the right document to um, um, to introduce that label? Um, if it is, it's fine. I'm just opening the floor in whether there would be an earlier document that has to register it. Um, my personal opinion, and this is purely a personal opinion, is that the labels should be application specific. Okay. That is. ETLS and GroupCom should not use the same label. Okay. Otherwise, you have an extremely, th extremely theoretical mm -hmm. way to move things between those two applications. Okay. And it's extremely theoretical enough. I don't think it's doable, but that's you know, beside the point. <laughs> Uh, Marco here, I support this. Uh, in fact, we have an open point on this Giger Como score about defining its own uh, exporter label. Yeah. So what was the, the question? Uh, I mean, um, the document is defining an exporter label. And I mean, I, I don't really see how we could do otherwise. It was used like um, to label for an ACE uh, sign challenge. So if um, if these kind of, I was thinking, and I, I probably am wrong uh, now that Jim said it should be application specific and I'm thinking about it. Um, I was just thinking that if a, a exporter, um, a TLS exporter was used for that particular purpose, um, for that particular uh, for that specific purpose for a sign challenge, maybe it's reusable across the different drafts who rely mm. on that functionality. But um, yeah, maybe it should be application specific. Yeah, yeah, I am. Um, I see that. Yeah, I agree with um, with that. So it should be defined in that document. Yeah. 
Okay, so yeah, that that's fine. So I, I think once we we, we uh, this is my my plan. Um, uh, once we have version four, I, I think this version four should be almost ready for a working group last call. So what I I would like to is I have um, at least before we start that working group last call um, a, a, a number of reviews. And then uh, maybe have do do we want to have a pre pre review uh, by the security directorate? I would I think it would be useful, but I, I don't know what's the what uh, people are thinking about it. I think it makes sense to have a pre review by the security directorate if we have specific questions. Okay. And we should probably sit down and talk about that. Okay. Okay, so okay, so this is um and I hope um well we will be at least the working group last call would would have started uh, by the ITF in Vancouver. So Let's go to the next presentation. If anyone, I mean, if we don't have anything to say. Okay, so I think that's going to be Marco. That's right. So let me check. I'm going to remove those. Do you see the screen? Yes, perfect. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, so we submitted this uh, version four mid January, uh, first after the Singapore meeting, and it mostly uh, focused on continuing on the restification uh, process of the API of the KDC. Uh, better shown in the next slide. <laughs> Right, uh, this is actually an updated slide from uh, Singapore. Uh, main changes, we clarify that uh, GIED, highlighted in yellow on top left, uh, is not strictly speaking an identifier of the group or topic, but uh, most properly its name actually. So it has nothing to do with an actual uh, cryptographic or security related identifier like the ID context of OSCOR, it's a pure name. And then we started to um, change especially methods and their handlers for the sub resources uh, to, to this fruit one. For instance, the S group GAD pub key resource related to uh, the retrieval public key. Uh, we changed the method post to fetch for the sake of retrieving the public keys only of some specified uh, group members. Um, in the last one, instead, ACE group uh, GID node, that used to be uh, just ACE group GID only, and the specific group member requesting for actions uh, to the KDC was supposed to be uh, identified by the particular secure uh, session or channel they had. Uh, following uh, an input and discussion from Jim, uh, we decided instead to go for one further sub resource per group member, uh, where Node there is essentially uh, yet another name, uh, plain name uh, for the group member. So again, nothing to do with anything uh, cryptographically related uh, like a sender ID. And this means that practically uh, every group member upon join has to receive such name. And that exact URI path of its concern is returned in the uh, location path uh, in the join response. Uh, but other than this, uh, when it comes about this resource, we also uh, revise the method and handlers it admit. And we introduce delete uh, for uh, an explicit leaving on, of the group. Uh, we redefine get, which is now about getting the same common group key material you can get with the get method on ace group GID. 
plus also the current individual key material for that node that for instance in group of score is the sender id and what used to be get became put uh, in order for that group member to ask uh, for a new uh, individual key material uh, so for instance for a new sender id in the group there are cases for doing that but of course in this document we are uh, more general than that and try to be abstract um, this was the main update, actually. Um, if you switch to the next slide, uh, it present, thank you, presents the same things in a slightly different fashion, and it's more convenient. Also, to... uh, quick question. Sorry, I haven't read the draft, uh, but what, what exactly is the thing, the, the data format uh, that is being put there? Uh, that's up to the particular profile to define. Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah, a question I had is more convenient to ask uh, here actually for the third bullet. Now it's about retrieval public keys, so all of them with get or a selected one with fetch. Uh, we had a separate discussion with Jim uh, for another draft we have in ACE defining uh, the group manager for creating and configuring the group for, uh, for an administrator. And we started to discuss of cases where, uh, for instance, the signature algorithm changes, uh, what to do in that case, other than brutal solutions like uh, restarting the group from scratch or forcing everyone to leave and rejoin. Um, a software solution can be that uh, the current group members re-upload uh, a new public key that is consistent with the new signature algorithm, for instance. Uh, just in case we decide to go with that, would it be useful to have a put method here for doing so? So for uploading a, a new public key. So th that, that resource is really providing an overview over the whole group. Um, you either get everything using get or you, you search in the collection using fetch. Mm -hmm. So putting something there, I would expect that the node ID would play a role there. Well, you can still be identified uh, through the access session you have with the group manager. But we can otherwise have another sub resource under the GID node path as an alternative. And that's really tied to that exact member. I think that I would rather see that as, as part of a put on the GID node because you need to do a pop and you're probably going to want to roll over the, the group, the, 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 the key group number. So you're probably going to want to issue new new keys at the same time you change the signature algorithm. Mm -hmm. So it makes more sense to pe put make that part of the uh, be able to be part of the put to the group ID node or to group ID slash node. Yeah. Okay. Good. Because of course, in case it has to be defined first of all here. <laughs> uh, thanks. Okay. Uh, Next slide, please. Uh, right, then we took into account a number of comments we got from Jim that we also managed to discuss, by the way, right after Singapore. Uh, they were mostly on improving uh, error dispatching and handling uh, the concept of non not name that I mentioned before. Um, in case upon joining the uh, group member provides not a raw public key, but an actual certificate, we clarify what we specify as URI, so the URI of the actual certificate, not of the repository. Uh, and then, as I mentioned before, we ended up using a fetch for retrieving public keys of a set uh, of nodes. There, there was, in fact, in Singapore, a discussion between um, having that as a fetch or a put, but we concluded with fetch. Uh, we also extended a lot uh, and revised the, the list of requirements defined here that are expected to be fulfilled by uh, profiles instantiating this draft. 
Um, and well, related also to the document of the next presentation, uh, we took out from there a lot of um, general content uh, that was more appropriate to have here and include it here in this document, in fact. Fuck. Right, uh, next slide, please. Okay, we have a number of open points that we should be able to discuss today, I think. And next steps for us are, in fact, taking care of those open points and uh, continuing, because we have just started, to address comments we got from, from Peter on the list, uh, as well as comments from Jim that we got today, in fact. Thank you, Jim. Uh, so next slide, please. And we have four open points we could think about. Uh, the first one is just to, to check that what we are doing is in fact fine. Uh, we are defining and registering a new uh, content type, as group com plus seaboard to really distinguish between um, till when the token is posted, uh, and that's pure ACE, uh, so based on ACE plus seaboard messages, against what happens right after uh, where we are defining new parameters. Uh, whose names often are just uh, as the names of other parameters we have. Uh, so, of course, we don't want to uh, have collisions between the two domain. Uh, and in fact, we are registering also our new synonymous parameters in a new register we are introducing. So just to double check is in fact correct to, to register these parameters separately and to have them in used in messages with a, a newly defined content format. Any problem with that? Is this correct? So just um, to, to make sure I understand. So you're basically creating your own registry. Yes, that was actually present already one or two versions ago. But then to make things properly consistent, we are also introducing a content format to use for messages with those parameters. Yeah, I think it's good to split. I mean, that's an idea. Mm -hmm. OK, uh, for the second point, that was something that at the very beginning of this, when we were still uh, writing individual uh, documents, we considered shortly to have uh, a single access token um, indicating in the scope multiple topics or groups uh, to join at once. Uh, it looked too complicated to do at the time with many more important things under definition. So we dropped that and we stick to a single topic or group per token. Uh, now we were thinking to reconsider this uh, and open the way for indicating uh, in the scope of the same token, multiple topics and groups. And sure, the devil is in the detail, but uh, in principle, it should be about um, having arrays of some of the parameters we have already. And in general, the client is supposed to indicate, or that can be the case, uh, multiple public keys in case he wants to use one public key in a different topic or group. but it can still indicate one only, and that would mean uh, it intends to use that one in all of the groups it is joining. Do you see any issues with that? Um, I don't see any issues with having a token cover multiple groups, because that's just scope. Mm. I'm a little bit leery about trying to en enroll in multiple groups at the same time because you need to figure out how to return multiple location paths. Right. Uh, then that will have to become a proper parameter or array of parameters in the join response. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Any other issue? Well, we can start proposing something uh, along these lines, considering also Jim's comment. Um, so just um, 
do you think it's going to simplify something or is it going to make things more complex at the end? I think that's the, the big question we should think about. Uh, of course, it becomes a little bit more complex also to parse, but not in a crazy way, I think. Yeah, no, parsing, I think it's, um, it's reasonable. Uh, I think it's more uh, handling uh, what uh, Jim just raised or this kind of scenarios. I think it's, uh, I'm not worried about the parsing. And also, it's, a, it's very current that uh, we have a, a binary things and that we move that to arrays. Um, so... Oh, well, we have arrays already <laughs> around. <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Probably what is now a spare parameter would become an array of those parameters. And what is now an array can become an array of arrays. Yeah. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> so does it, what does the working group think? Uh, is it a good thing or is it really, really bad? If we don't have this, uh, you need to get a token, join a group, then get another token for joining another group, and so on. So this is what we want to avoid, essentially. <laughs> um, I, I think that you don't need to do that. I think you can get a token and join a group and join a group and join a group and join a group. That token can cover multiple groups. Yeah, you need to one. have indicated all those groups uh, in scope. Yeah, but that's not a big deal because right. that's already an array. Right. It's about that. <laughs> I think that's a lot more difficult. I think that's a lot simpler than saying we want to be able to, to you know, well, we're going to try to make five joins at the same time. And OK, now we have to deal with some of them succeed, some of them fail. How do we return the correct error information? What do we do with that? That's a little bit more complicated than just the token can do multiple. Can, cover multiple items. Yes, and the idea is then to have a single joining request response exchange. So if I understand right, is this is like multiple groups within one KDC or, or what is the... Still one KDC, yes. Okay. And there is only one, um, yeah, okay, good. Okay, then we'll start to sketch something about this too. <laughs> um, okay, uh, point three and four are, are related. Uh, starting with three, uh, there can be cases where the KDC wants to um, rekey the group using, uh, let's say, advanced uh, rekeying schemes uh, based also on multicast messages uh, to rekey well the whole group at once in the ideal case or subset of group members um, at once. And that would, uh, would, of course, require the group members to know um, the URI path they, they have to expect getting those uh, multicast messages as well as the multicast address um, in the first place. So they need to get, in case, that information uh, from the KDC upon joining, and that would be yet another parameter. So we were thinking, uh, in case this kind of advanced working mechanisms are supported in a group, uh, that the KDC in the joining response can include uh, this information so that the group members, of course, supporting this in the first place, are ready to get this uh, wrecking messages if they are sent. And in parallel where uh, point four is the other way around, um, and this is probably more important to support uh, in general, uh, the base solution we are also already indicating in the document uh, is that the KDC uh, requests the group talking to one group member at a time. And to do that, it has to send uh, a unicast message to that member and then to another member and so on. And the idea was in this case that the group member upon joining specifies uh, to the KDC a convenient URI. When uh, where it is fine to to receive those unicast tracking messages, so it's kind of mirrored essentially. And uh, if we have to choose one only to support, is definitely four. Uh, I think uh, here also we wanted to check with you if there is any issues. You see, um, 
in the case of four, how tied is this to the core document that you, we, we brought up about doing reverse observe? Is this the same thing or is this different? Uh, I haven't thought of that sounds different because that's based on multicast responses while here four is about um, unicast uh, requests from the KDC to the group member in fact so it seems the other way around Mm, probably what you what you're thinking about seems yet another set of information that the KDC can provide in the joint response uh, to tell the group member what to listen to to get what is a multicast response. But <laughs> so it can be yet another case actually. Okay, the reason I come I ask is because that makes a difference in terms of how I think about this. Mm. Um, I'd like to see three start as a separate document myself because I don't know that I understand enough about how it operates with things. And I don't necessarily want it to hold things up. Mm -hmm. Do you mean to define the actual additional parameters involved or even the breaking protocol? Um, just, in, I mean, partly, I mean, part of my worry is how much, how much of that information gets sucked into the rekeying protocol itself. Mm. Should it should, should it be part of the rekeying protocol instead of part of a general solution? Um, so a little uh, bit more discussion about how things operate. I don't necessarily have a problem with folding it into this document. So it, you know you don't have to have a full thing. Just you know, this is the section we'd insert into the document. Mm -hmm. um, just so I can think about it with a bit more information around it, um, if that makes sense. Yeah, we can start with the placeholder. For now, it was mostly the KDC telling them, I'm using this, I'm going to reach you uh, at that address and URI, please uh, be sure to be reachable there. Right, but here's the question, why do I want to implement it today? <laughs> yeah, sure. It was just to set. No, I understand. For... You're, you're just you're you're trying to set yourself up for futureness. <laughs> okay. Um, it was to set the ground for possible KDCs uh, using something like that. Right. Because I suppose that the ground has to be set in this document, I guess. Well, no, it, it can be said in, in the first document that, that creates such a protocol. Okay. Because until until that document exists, you don't care what those values, you don't, you don't need to implement those values. Mm. So they will be there uh, about extending the content of this CBOR map, so to say. Right. Okay. They would be updating this this draft, I suppose. I'd be updating the registry. Yeah. Yeah, the registry, the joining response. Yeah. Uh, okay, thanks. Uh, well, four, I suppose, is uh, instead something we should have here because you'd be directly used already by this draft itself, where we describe a base point to point wrecking mechanism. Yes. I mean, yeah, four makes more sense to include in the document. I'm not too sure I see the use case for it, but that's different. But just one thing, um, if we're talking about option of parameters, um, do we have an, um, an extension-like mechanisms or? 
Well, they would be about registering more parameters in the registry mentioned at point one, uh, by the way, and telling where they are used in particular in which message. Okay, basically someone not, I mean, not supporting it, just ignore it. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, they would be totally optional. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, somebody, yeah, somebody who doesn't support it isn't going to be able to use it because they don't support, they don't understand the new rekey mechanism. So they're out of luck anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, a question on four. Yes. Yes. So um, is this saying um, this is where you can reach me? Yes, the exact URI to, to push on the group member the new key material. Yeah, okay, thanks. Yeah, the address is fine. They can talk already because of the session they have. It's mostly the exact resource. Okay. Uh, yes, and I think it's the last slide. Yeah. yeah, it is. Thank you very much for the feedback. So do you have everything to move on or? Oh yeah, I think so. Yeah. There are certain <laughs> points, one from before, two reviews. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. <laughs> okay, so good. Um, I like to see the progress uh, with that draft. So, mm -hmm. so in terms of planning, uh, how, much, how, many, uh, how many versions do you expect? Um, so I guess we were going to have one before Vancouver ITF. Definitely. Um, and um, one more at least. We may probably start thinking of working group plus call if there are no big issues raised. Okay. That's so what we... I just mentioned, by the way, in her mail too. Okay, so that's uh, it's good. So again, um, one you you we think it's quite in a stable um, um, a stable um, state. Um, we will have to check uh, whether we want to we have or issue we want to have the security directory to provide feedbacks on or um, and uh, maybe insist on more reviews on that. So um, that's the, the way we'd like to move that. Agree. <laughs> okay, good. So the second presentation, I guess. Yes, this is a bit easier and shorter. <laughs> but of course, it's very much related, uh, submitted the same day, just following uh, updates for, from Kigrocom. Uh, so next slide, please. Uh, OK, of course, the, the detailed description here as a profile was uh, also revised, uh, chasing the changes just made in ASK Kigrocom. Uh, as agreed, in Singapore, we also indicated uh, eight bytes in size for the two nances, C nance, and R S nance, also used here for uh, proof of possession of the client's private key. And I also have an open point related to this size, but that comes later. Uh, following also comments, I guess from Jim, uh, we also elaborated more on R S nance. Because, of course, the normal case is uh, the first approach with a group manager, and this is returned after the token posting. But sometimes that's just not what happens. Uh, for instance, if you go for the DTLS profile uh, and you run it so that uh, the token is embedded in the handshake messages itself, in that case, there is, of course, no RS nonce explicitly returned, and it has to be derived. So we had a separate section describing um, where uh, the part of the challenge to be mapped to RS nonce comes from. Well, there's the, the easy case in case it's returned explicitly, or um, in the case I just discussed before, um, TLS exporter, so aligned with <laughs> the NQTT profile. But we also found another case where the node is actually rejoining uh, and based on a still valid token that is not reposted, uh, of course, and then, well, uh, if they are running um, a DTLS session, uh, TLS exporter again, uh, if they are using OScore instead, uh, we are considering a construction that we are also using um, in another document, uh, the group OScore profile of ACE, uh, in a different meaning than this one. I know it can be confusing, but that's an actual transport profile of ACE. 
Uh, of course, we need feedback on this. Uh, Jim started to give us something uh, in the mail uh, today, and I think we need to discuss more on this. Uh, in different senses, to be more aligned with the MQTT profile uh, when it's about the LS exporter and, and about this construction when instead all score is used. Uh, next Just time. a question. Um, why do we need to be aligned with MQTT? I'm thinking especially of the size of nuances okay. and, and then on the label allocation. Uh, yeah, the wise is probably okay. other than that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's not a big. Yeah. <laughs> and here we are supposed to be constrained, actually. Uh, okay. So better to have that in mind. Um, sure. Then in the Appendix A, where we have a list of requirements uh, from ASCII Group Com, we have, of course, uh, revised them too and also documented how this profile fulfills the new one introduced in the latest version of ASCII Group Com. Uh, pretty much editorial uh, work. Um, the abstract now, I hope, reflects better the fact that this is a profile of ASCII Group Com. And as I mentioned before, uh, a lot of content, especially from the first two sections, was uh, taken away and moved to ASCII.com because it just had general applicability and fits better there. And we also addressed a review we got from Peter right after Singapore that was mostly about uh, other editorial points and clarifications, nothing functional. Okay. And the uh, next slide, uh, just as an actual forward pointer to the open points I have on this. And of course, the main next step is uh, keeping changes in Kigurcom. We also discussed before and a review we got today from Jim. And I have three uh, open points and I probably have the answer already from the discussion uh, at the first presentation. Uh, so till today we have uh, this uh, TLS exporter label that mm, it serves the same purpose actually in, in the NQTT profile and, and here, so generating challenges for, for signatures. Uh, so to start, we, we talked about defining it well there, the six then was very much forward in, in, in that sense and, and reusing it. In fact, right now we are uh, reusing the label from there. Um, but as Jim was mentioning before, and I also agree, it's probably better, shouldn't be a problem for the allocation per se, to um, to define a new label for the very same purpose uh, here in this document. At, at least it's very specific to this um, profile and application, but it will be used exactly the same way, essentially. Is it a, a comment? Is it preferable that I change the label name to say exporter ace MQTT sign challenge to make it more application specific? Would be yeah, I, I think well. we should both have um, the profile somehow appearing in the label name itself. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just have, um, I don't know, Jim. Um, it seems to me that. Um, there is some uh, constraints on the um, the length of the string, so I have to check that a little bit. But um, so just make, I mean, uh, I think there is a, um, a limit, but I, I'm not sure. I have to to double check. I think the limit is like the limit of a hash function. Okay, <laughs> so that's not a limit. <laughs> Uh, names, uh, I mean, suggestions for names are welcome. Otherwise, it sounds obvious to just continue with more dashes and uh, yeah. keywords from the profile. I mean, uh, okay, then we'll allocate a new label here. Then, uh, okay, second, and this is also related to the non sizes again. Um, we got comments from Ben Kaduk in, in Singapore on this. Um, eight byte in size can even be fine uh, as long as we justify why it is uh, okay uh, as is, for instance, as security considerations. Um, I was wondering if uh, whatever we do uh, can be aligned with uh, what the NQTT profile says in, in this sense, if we can converge on the same kind of, kind of reasoning 
And other than that, I had a look also to the Oscar RFC, uh, where Appendix B2 that involves exchanging of, of nonces for, for different reasons than, uh, than building a challenge, and more for deriving a context, of course, uh, makes this kind of consideration uh, and, and bottom line to, to find um, an acceptable trade-off between probability of collision and number of uh, messages required to have repetitions. Uh, so I wonder, first of all, if this line of, line of reasoning can be reused here, though the problem is less severe here, uh, I think, and if how much uh, we should synchronize in this with uh, the NQTT profile. Um, I, th I think that the security case, security analysis, is going to be easier if if they are pretty closely aligned in terms of how they go about doing things. So we only have to get the security analysis done once. Um, I have a whole lot less problems with collisions here because this is basically as I mean. As far as I'm concerned, you could use counters here because the thing to do is to make sure it doesn't look like something you've done recently and it is time bound, unlike the OSCOR thing where you're deriving a key where you want to make sure you don't get a key collision. Yeah. So you mean they, they may even be smaller? Yeah, but I, I, yeah, they could potentially be smaller. Um, mm. This is one of those arguments that I've had with Ecker at times. It's like, well, if I'm doing DTLS, how small can I make the, the nonce in, in DTLS? Because it's, I mean, it's, if I'm deriving a new key and I'm deriving a nonce, well, the nonce is basically just a, Am I on the right session? Mm -hmm. So we've had all sorts of discussions about, you know, a counter is bad news only because both of us agree that making the nonce predictable in DTLS is probably a bad idea because you might be able to get some information from predictability. But doing something like encrypting a counter and using that for your nonce is probably perfectly fine. Um, we were having these discussions as part of the, the of the lead, lead up. Um, so it's like, if it's time bound, the answers are slightly different than if it's not time bound in terms of length. On the other hand, I feel kind of silly about encrypting something that's you know 32 bytes, a 32 byte value with a 512 bit key. Personally, eight bytes looks fine to me. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> um, so I'm not exactly sure of the good considerations and answers we should give to Ben about this. Well, um, so the, the answer for, for 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 MQTT and for this document is different than it is for the OSCOR profile. Right. Yeah, that we have much much less at stake here. <laughs> well, then an argument can be if there you are safe with eight byte nonces, uh, going for that here is super good. <laughs> yeah, no, no, this is definitely a less strict problem. Okay. So we are not looking at reducing this eight byte size. We are fine with that size. Uh, right now, seems to me we are fine. But of course, Ben was hoping for some more uh, reasoning behind the choice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. But um, I mean, uh, uh, that because in the, I mean, um, in this case, it's more um, we have more constraints. And I'm, my question was more: um, is eight a fine uh, value? I think 16 bits between the two of them, I think is fine. 16 bytes between the two of them, I think is fine. In terms of, cons of constraints, not security. 
Oh, yeah. Okay. I mean, right now it's an, uh, as in the Oscar profile, where there's a discussion of increasing them, but more for the sake of security, actually. Okay. And here you don't have that exact security problem. Mm -hmm. So probably having that size that the Oscar profile has now <laughs> is just fine. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I thought that because um, we didn't have the same security constraints uh, requirement, um, we were looking at have, having a four and not eight or something like that. Or no, a, a, a would be fine. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, uh, thanks. And last point, uh, which is a bit tricky. Uh, while going through the revision of this document and in detail on the RESTful interface, I, I noticed this. Uh, we can send a get to group of score GID node name, uh, and that's supposed to give me back uh, the common group key material and my own individual key material. So practically my sender ID in this case. Uh, then the way it is defined uh, already in SQ.com, if I instead uh, send a get to group of score GID, there the point is just to get back the um, share key material only. But the way we are practically connecting pieces now is, is that uh, I perform the two operations and in both cases, I get exactly the same thing. Uh, because in, in the second case where I'm not really supposed to get uh, my individual sender ID, uh, I get it anyway because it's a parameter inside uh, the key map of what I get. And this is not defined in so much details in SQ. It is abstract enough that does not define the content of key. What we do here. So a possible way to, uh, let's say, fix this and keep this consistent anyway would be that um, in the response from group of score group name, so where, where I should get from uh, only the shared group key material, I may not include anymore the client ID parameter uh, of key containing my sender ID. And so the, the purpose and the semantic of the operation would be as we actually want it to be. And we are consistent again. But of course, we create a difference uh, from the case where you get a joint response upon joining with a post. Do you see a problem here, first of all? It looked as an inconsistency in intentions to me. <laughs> I, don't, I don't follow it. I don't understand what you're actually saying. I need more details written down someplace. Okay, I'll prepare a mail. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, you, you can see it as a minor thing and pretty innocuous. It's just that mm, you have some expectation uh, when sending that request and you get something that has more in a sense. Right. So it's not perfectly aligned with what you intend to do. By the way, looking at this issue reminded me, I like using the uppercase characters for the things which are not Fixed to names, you might want to propagate that back to the other document. You like it. OK, yes. excellent. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you like? You like group name and node name? Being in all uppercase as being things which are not, which, which are variable names. Yeah, like okay. names. group of score under case, it's an example literal. Okay. Uh, Part segment that in this example is like that. Well, group name is well put there the actual name of the group you have. So you like um, non-normative uh, names to be in capital <laughs> letters. <laughs> no, they're not not normative. They are, it's it's not that they are non-normative. That they are specific to a either a group or an individual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I... I was just teasing. <laughs> Mark, may I check whether I understand the question? Um, 
you do ask uh, for the second one when you just query the group name, you get still node specific information and you want to avoid that. Right, because the intention is to get back uh, only shared group key material. But in the so parameter client specific information, and you are asking, should I remove that from the key? Um, yes, only, only for the response coming back from this. Okay. Yes. Is is the concern is the concern returning more information than needed? Um, only from a performance point of view, if you really bother about uh, the size of a sender ready to be sent. And more in general, the way we are defining that metal to that resource is getting back the, the group key material shared with everyone in principle. And instead here, we are including something more, uh, something individual. So I think we are diverging from the intention of the method. So, so, Marco, for, for my understanding, why do you get more information than you need? Uh, you are supposed to get only what's common, uh, and that is contained inside key. Uh, the problem is that if we don't say anything, now key is including also uh, the sender ID of that node, uh, which is not group shared information, it's individual. Okay. Uh, so it's more than you were expecting to get. Uh, and plus, if you run the to get I wrote there, you, you get back exactly the same thing. <laughs> That's not the intention, the way we define them in ASCII group comp. Okay. I'll send the mail anyway also to collect more feedback and to clarify this a bit better. Uh, from what I see is that it's the only thing that um, bother you for, for, for that, uh, I mean, on the open point. The other one, we know pretty much where, where to go. Um, that I think you would like to solve um, before, um, I mean, uh, yeah, you yeah, don't sure. really know how to handle that's uh okay well, there's a big point in june's mail this morning that was also related to the case where um, the joining node and group manager talks using uh, oscor and you may want to derive new challenges for a rejoin mm -hmm. under the same token uh, that is some more discussion also uh, the, the text to think about is all in the draft already and in the mail we exchanged today. <laughs> in, in general, points uh, Jim's raised in, in his review are open points. Okay, so I think that's going to be... Uh, well, we, it's a request to read the mailing list <laughs> <laughs> and to respond. So we take that point. Is there any slide? Any more slide? Uh, no. No, that was the last one. So um, I'm just wondering if anyone got uh, any specific comments or um, did you think the the interim meeting is useful? I think it is very much. So I hope it, it helps to move to the document. Okay, so do you think we should have another one before um, the Vancouver meeting? Uh, hard to say for me. I, I expect updates submitted the week before the cutoff. Hard to have something even before okay. then, I guess. <laughs> yeah, Jim? I, I think the only thing that was would give us input on a, an interim meeting is if we need to do some discussions on the profile on, on the documents currently with Ben and possibly the pub sub document the, 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 the pub sub encryption document from Francesca mm. um, so for, for the Oscar profile um, Francesca and I have looked through the comments from Ben. Francesca done, done the NITs. 
and uh, yeah we have proposals for res resolving the other uh, comments as well but we are not uh, we haven't sent out the answer to BIM Ben so that comes next week uh, for the DTLS profile well. maybe, maybe maybe Olaf knows more but I think he is not he dropped off yeah he dropped off yeah so um if we are setting an interim meeting we need um to have a um, two weeks um, notice in advance. So the only question I, I would like to know is that um, I guess if we have that interim meeting in three weeks, so it's not going to be related on the update of the draft we discussed today, that's something we can do in provision also and cancel if, um, if all problems are resolved. So it's also one possibility. If you think that's useful, um, let me know. I think it makes sense to set one up for the for the last two weeks of, of February, and we can always cancel it if we don't need it. Sounds good. Okay. And by the way, and, and by that time, I, I would be probably more efficient in WebEx. <laughs> okay, right. So it's something we can do. Any other comments? No. So. Probably the meeting can be adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much for the feedback. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.